Hey guys, this is Angelos doing a Shogun commentary video. In this one, I'm going to pick one of these replays at random, do a commentary on it, and then perhaps do a commentary on another random replay. So, I'm going to look for my array of replays here that I've named so stupidly. Instead of numbering them like most normal people, I give them stupid names to try and jog my memory about what's included in them without having to rewatch every single one of them. So, 3v3 Nine Fingers, 3v3 Dirty Spaniard. 3v3 Martial Rage. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the one Pink sent me. 2v2 Ranked Good, 2v2 Sino. You know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this one called 2v2 Sino, and then I'll look at one of the other ones. So most of the battles I've done on Shogun have been 2v2s with Sino. I've done a few team battles with Pinks and Marshall, and uh, Marley, and Aleron, which are members of my clan. Uh, Sino is not, obviously. Um, but uh, most of the most of the decent replays I've got are f of me and Sino, because most of the team battles I do with the gang is just oh, it's just such a mess. You couldn't com um, if if any of you have watched Pink's channel, uh, that's Pelopida Scythe he calls himself on YouTube or Pink Six Six Years or whatever the hell he calls himself. Uh, twat face to me. <laughs> uh, he um he's does some live commentaries on. Uh, these team battles in Shogun, and you just you just see the mess that you know. It's, it's, it's such a mess, and that's why it is most of the time. No, 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 they, no. Most of the time they are fun to play, but I wouldn't be able to commentate on them. There's just no way I'd be able to commentate on them. Be like, oh, I'm gonna I'm march at my guy. Oh, oh, wait, hang on, my guy's actually gone into a column formation for some reason. Oh, and he's charging into the middle of my army. Oh, he's encircled. Oh, he's dead. So I couldn't really do a commentary on it. Right in this two v two, we're up against two level nine players. Uh, I think I remember this one. Yeah, I do. Uh, I have a standard army, uh, which is standard for me because I don't really like being imaginative very much. I just I just use the same sort of standard build and just change a few things around all the time. So, um, but it's it's generally the same sort of thing: strong melee build, average cavalry, uh, moderate ranged, one meat shield, and spears and support. And I always do this thing where I have a uh, one or two matchlocks on my flanks backed up by uh, spearmen. Uh, I will move this uh, Naginata unit here and cover my matchlock on the right. So Sino, who is my ally, has uh, gone with all cavalry because he's that pro, people. <laughs> no, because it's just it's quite fun just to randomly go you know, with crazy builds. He, he finds it fun. I, I, I find this a bit of a headache. I don't think I'd be able to manage this many cavalry. So he's gone with lots and lots of Yari Cav, lots of Katana Cav, I think he's got some Bow Cav back here. He does not. Okay, so he, he's just got all melee Cav, Great Guard, Yari Cav again. So he's going to start off the engagement. His guy's shooting out of a Mangonel, but he's using that hill for cover. So all the Mangonel rounds are landing into the side of the mountain, uh, the side of the hill. One's landed right here, so you can see how ineffective it is. So he's going to come and attack my guy as I come down off the hill and uh, help him out. So what he first he does, he dances around this Aragashu unit, which is in spear wall, which is very unmaneuverable. He, he goes, he outmaneuvers that Aragashu unit, then smashes this one in the flank and rear, causing it to rout because Aragashu got crap morale in spear wall, extremely vulnerable to flanking attacks. So he shatters that unit in one charge. Over here, he does tries to do the same thing with this Aragashu unit, but gets caught by all this cav coming from uh, the green guy. Actually, one of the Mangonel rounds lands right in the middle of it. They're routing it at almost half strength, which is a bit, uh, a bit annoying for him. Over here, though, he's doing he's doing a really good thing here. He's uh, got he's danced around all the Aragashu, actually routed spearmen with cav, uh, routed all the archers, thus all the bow warrior monks that are facing me have routed. Uh, he's going to get engaged by some Aragashu, but but you can see the damage he's done. Look, all the all the uh, archers dead, all the spearmen dead. It's good use of cav. This. So uh, if you if you actually want to cav spam, this is probably the way to do it. You want to uh, you want to be not just engaging your guy on your own. You want to be uh, helping your ally out. So over here, Green's going to get his cav slaughtered by Sino's Great Guard and Yari Cav. He's going to do a number of flanking attacks and side attacks. And he's going to overwhelm and, anno and annihilate them all quite quickly. Over on my side, I've been engaged by the green guy's cav, but I have a height advantage, so I'm in no danger of losing this. I also have great guard, and so my great guard are easily going to 
chop through his katana and yari carve in prolonged melee like this. Uh, but well, that's because I've upgraded them quite a lot. They've got seven shoves on them. I'm also backing up with two spearmen, so in that engagement, yeah, he d he's quite right to uh, pull out of that. But I'll just chase him down and kill him. I should be engaging my center here, but I don't want to be uh, in doing that while my cover o occupied. Otherwise, I won't be able to get any decent hammer and anvil strikes in. So over here, we got Sino's calf just dancing around Green Guy's calf. Look at the slaughter we got here, people. I'll just zoom in. Uh, Sino has completely routed all four or five units of uh, the Yari Cav and uh, Great Guard and Katana Cav, and he's now got Cav. We've now have Cav superiority on this on this battle. Green's just gone a bit crazy, just done a combined attack order on Sino's Cav because he's got no way of pursuing that now. So he's got no spearmen here. So uh, Sino's going to be having quite a quite a good time here. No spearmen and that huge melee blob. And uh, he's given up. He's given the height to Sino with his cav. What the hell? <laughs> Sino's gone for the mangonel here. <laughs> and uh, he has six matchlocks protecting his mangonel. But uh, Sino still gets through with his great guard and kills it. <laughs> and now the now the matchlocks aren't looking. And I bet that great guard's going to kill them. And the, I'll look back at that later on. God almighty. So over here. These are level 9s people, these are not low ranked. This is just what this game is like some of the time. What is this? Testudo formation? <laughs> Jesus. So he's, my guy's just trying to slowly approach my cav like I haven't noticed that. Uh, in uh, spear wall, in the most compact, tight formation you can imagine. Doing this, uh, I don't know what he's doing, he's, a bit, bit, he's attacking me now. I used uh, Whistling Arrows to dis disorientate him. I got my general in a stand and fight, and I'm going to hopefully counter charge. Come on, counter charge. There we go. So I got a slight hill advantage and a counter charge, so that with my general right behind and the effect of those whistling arrows, uh, this is not going to take too long. Sinus Cav comes in and helps me out here, does some hammer and anvil strikes. Slip through the gap there with my Cav, get round, wipe them all out, and that melee fight's over in about five seconds. So. Let's have a look over here at what we got. Oh, I thought his great guard would have stayed in melee and killed all the matchlocks, but he pulled them out. It wouldn't have surprised me. They probably, probably would have killed all the matchlocks in melee, unless he had turned them, because I don't think he noticed they were coming. So, over here, I don't know what he's doing over here. This is uh, his entire melee contingent in a big blob. He's got his range nowhere near his melee, uh, and of course he brought a mangonel, so... Hmm. And over there we just got the remnants of Green's army, which is just his avatar, running away, being chased by Sino's Cav. So, as I think you saw in this vid, good use of Cav by Sino. And there's that uh, Yari Aragashi I showed you earlier on, glitched in, it's supposed to be routing, but it's not. It uh, glitches sometimes when in Spear War and doesn't route off the field. So, just because I'm an evil bastard, I'm just going to shoot them all down with my matchlock here, point blank. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good stuff. Right, um, on the other side, I've engaged the mass blob over here, which is already wavering because I shot him full of flaming arrows. And then me and Sino are just going to attack them all with our cav and our melee and a big blob. Green's already—I think Green's lost his gen. So, I mean, I mean, this, 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 this is quite silly. There's no, there's no way I can justify this in a tactical sense. About how this, how this makes any sort of sense on any level, but yeah, I even charge my general in here because because I know this is just going to be over in like five seconds, and then they all chain route. Uh, Sino doesn't actually engage in this battle; he's over there dealing with all the matchlocks in the back. Uh, yeah, I mean. I don't understand. I'm, try I'm trying to understand how what was going through the mind of Sumo Cookie when he when he thought of that strategy. Hide in the wood with a mangonel and six matchlocks. Come out of the wood with six melee infantry, leaving the matchlocks and the trebuchet or the mangonel exposed, allowing Sino to basically run rings round my guy and help me crush him, and then and then kind of do what he did. 
Yeah, it makes no sense. I, I can't. I can't justify it. <laughs> anyway, good game to our two opponents there, and good game to Sino. I think it did show he had quite good micro and good use of his cav there. Right, I'm going to show you another replay now. Let's see what we can find. Do, 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 I think actually I'm going to have to look at these replays before I show you them. So I will be right back. Okay, so I went and looked for a few replays. And, uh, yeah, this is probably the best one. I had to look for some replays, and after the last viewing of tactical brilliance you saw in the last one, I didn't think you would want to see another one quite like that. This one is one of the, the best I have at the moment, <laughs> unfortunately. The other, ones I was, the other ones I could have shown you, Bow Monk Spam, would that have tickled your fancy? No. Corner Camping, would that have tickled your fancy? No. How about, uh, shooting bulletproof samurai with matchlocks to show that their name means absolutely nothing? Would that have tickled your fancy? Probably, but the rest of the vid was shit. So, this one we'll have to do. Um, okay, this is a ranked what match, one of the few me and Sino play. It's in, it looks like it's in ultra or large unit scale. I think it's in large, isn't it? Large, yeah. Uh, it's one of the few games I play in this unit skill. Okay, so this is not my standard army, and I'm surprised to see see it, to be honest. I have a Bo Ashigaru, then two Yari Aragashu as a meat shield. I have two Bow Monks, um, and I have... Three Katana, one no three Katana and two Nodachi Samurai. Two Matchlocks, on either one on either flank, backed up by two Spearmen one on either flank. Then Katana Cav and Katana Cav. So I only have two cavalry units. So um, I think this, yeah, this has got key buildings on. I went to uh, take this bow dojo to start with. Archery dojo, I should say. My opponent, they were both level 10s in this one, just so you know. My opponent moves up with some matchlock Ar Aragashu in a bizarre formation. Shooting at me with his bow monks back here somewhere. Where are they? Are they there? There they are. He has heavy gunners as well. Yeah, this is post DLC as well. I did not knew that. So he has some bow monks in tight formation. All of his men have got heavy chevs on them. Um, he's trying to outflank me with the ridge here. He sends some uh, matchlocks to push me back into the wood over here. And he wants to try and get some bow monks up on this ridge to shoot down into my men in the valley. So I go out of range of his bow monks and then just pick off his matchlock Aragashu. And then I flank round here, taking the wood and shooting into the side of my opponent uh, with flaming arrows. So, <sighs> already this actually looks like it's going to be silly, <laughs> to be honest. But, uh, yeah, I don't care. So, on Sino's side, he's engaged some cav. Uh, yeah, backed them up with some naginatas and he seems to have lost one cav, killed possibly two enemy great guard units it looks like. It's a good trade off I'd say. Both our opponents have gone for keeping their bows in block formation for some reason which is interesting. Okay so over here I've got some matchlock fire out of the woods shooting his matchlocks. Got my uh, bows shooting his heavy gunners because at this time I didn't know what they were like. Uh, I hadn't actually fought against them before so I wanted to take them out as quickly as possible. Uh, and uh, since since playing this game, I've realised that heavy gunners can practically win battles all on their own. That's, uh, that's if you use them correctly, that is, because they are quite silly. So I deplete them to 19, and I end up routing them in the end, just with archery fire. So you don't see any heavy gunner nonsense in this battle, which I'm quite happy about. Over here, he comes down off the hill after I provoke him out with some matchlock fire from the woods. I actually engage him with my meat shield here to tie down his uh, units in melee. But I should not have done that in hindsight because that now negates the charge bonus of my melee units coming in to back me up, back my uh, meat shield up. Probably should have saved that for another day. On the left side, I swing some cav round because I can see that he's got quite a lot of range on the uh, hill and only one spearman, so I could probably avoid that and hit his gen or his uh, bows depending on what target I go for. Sino sends a cav unit over, takes out this archer unit, good charge by him. Over here, my our spearmen clash with one another. Uh, pinning them down. So that's kind of negated both of our spears helping each other with any cav, but my guy doesn't have any cav, so that's pretty much 
alright with me. I'll do a quick hammer and anvil strike on this spear unit, engaging my two melee units here. Then I swing out of the engagement and help Sino with this uh, range. He sees that I've got this pretty much covered, runs out, does a strike on this unit, I suppose, does it? Yes, he does. So that helps me again. Gets a hammer and anvil here on these spear units that I've got pinned in melee. That makes them waver and practically rout. Then, same thing over here. I've got our spear units are tied down with one another. Uh, he got a downhill charge on me, so he's going to have an advantage, but uh, we're sort pretty much killing each other there. Up on the hill, he moved his spear unit away from his general, which is obviously a bad move. Uh, I take advantage of this with my cav, kill his matchlocks off, then kill his bow monks off, and now his gen, who's just sat down on a little desk, is he? Oh no, no. Normally in stand and fight, he gets a little seat out, but not this time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Even his little square fork can protect him from that cav assault. So that's pretty much my guy toasted. So again, not a great showing of tactical brilliance, but then this is Shogun Total War after all. Not many of the games I play are that good. Even the games I lose aren't aren't uh, aren't that good. It's either it's, it uh, this honestly just makes no sense to me after time. So anyway, on this side, our spearmen kill each other off, sort of. Uh, I lose my unit, but I got a matchlock, and I point blank them, causing causing them to rout. And then just because I like killing things in a virtual context, I think I'll send my cav after him, will I? To chase down routing units, will I do that? I'm sure I do that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I send them back to to take him off. Probably sh probably shouldn't have done that, but yeah. Like I said, I like killing things in a virtual context, not in a real life context, because I'm not a madman. Right, so over here, Sino and his guy have been skirmishing with one another from the woods. Again, he's kept his men in tight formation, um, which, you know, generally would be stupid, but because he's got them, uh, he's got heavy upgrades on. He's actually killing lots and lots of Sino's men in the woods. Which makes perfect sense, but Sino's men are, after all, Aragashu, and he's fighting Bow Monk, so you can't really complain too hard about that. So, seeing he's losing the range fight, uh, well, he's not really losing it. Uh, oh, yeah, he is losing it. He's only got Aragashu, so I don't think he could actually win that. Seeing as, yeah, seeing as he's no point in him sitting back and getting shot by those things, he engages in melee, realizing he has superior melee. Is that Katana Hero? Yes, it is. So that's gonna, it's gonna chop a few of his. Uh, Katana Sam up. Jesus. Over here, Sino leads a unit of Great Guard into my army, which actually destroys one of my no Nodachi units. You can see there. It didn't get a charge bonus on me. I was just I had to try and just pin it into melee, but I didn't have any spears nearby, so I lost about 100 Nodachis to one Great Guard, which was not quite what I wanted. So thank you, Sino, for doing that. <laughs> if you had led him into a spear unit, that would have been better. But then. Who cares? We win in the end anyway. So, over here, we thought, well, it's pretty much wrapped, wrapped up now. His, his range with no support is now gets exterminated by our cav. His me he loses the melee fights. Sino had superior melee after all. He just had inferior range. So all he had to do was just close the gap. And here, well, the Katana heroes are getting slaughtered by everything you can think of, either in melee or getting shot to pieces by arrow fire. So, yeah, that was a ranked game for you on this amazing, brilliant tactical game that is Shogun Total War. Now, I'm, I'm just saying that because I'm not a great fan of this game, to be honest. Um, it seems to be more about numbers than, than tactics. Numbers meaning, let's say, if I had 26 in attack, and my opponent has 28 in attack, even if I have superior terrain, half the time, simply because he's got a larger number than me, he will destroy me in an uneven melee fight. So to try and even that, I always like to try and swing around with Cav, kill a gen, or do hammer and anvil strikes. You kill a gen, that doesn't matter about the numbers, but if the gen stays alive and rallies you know, a superior force against you, you, you kind of get screwed over. Um... I'm not too fond of those heavy gunners. Uh, there was uh, there was a game I saw uh, where Pink's used them and killed 500 men with with a heavy gunner unit. So a little bit OP, wouldn't you say? I'm not not I'm not really a fan of these DLC. I'm, I'm moaning a lot, aren't I? But you know, people who know me realise I do moan a lot. I'm not a fan of these DLC units. The, 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 
I mean, you have to get them to be able to play this game properly, really. I mean, the retainers of the Ikki Wiki DLC, they're quite extremely useful. If you don't have them, you're at a bit of a disadvantage. Uh, same with the Heavy Gunners. If you don't have them, you're a bit of a disadvantage again, really, because they're extremely powerful units. But they can be carried with archers. But if, if someone knows how to use them properly, like I said, they can pretty much win a battle on their own. Okay, so that was two replays, uh, two V2s I'd done with Sino. Um, I'm going to say that no, neither me or him give a crap about this game, and neither me or him actually uh, are any good at this game. And when I said we don't give a crap, we just we don't really. <laughs> we play it for fun, but we, we're not, you know, we're not like thinking that we have to be all. Uh, what's them call it? You know, competitive about it. It's just playing it for fun. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed those two games. And uh, uh, next vid I'll make will probably either be Men of War, probably be Men of War next, and then another show we want after that. So until next time, fellas. Adios.